Hello and welcome to another episode of Geeky and Tweaky. Today I'm going to show you how to build a low cost mobile signal booster which you can use in areas with very poor cellular coverage. First we will discuss background of the problem and the solution design. Then I'll show you the construction video and finally we'll look into the results and we'll come to a conclusion. In the basement of my house I have set up a small office where I usually work. I have got good Wi-Fi coverage so data connectivity is not an issue. But the problem is there is no cellular coverage so I cannot receive voice calls or SMS messages. Most of the time my colleagues complained that your phone was out of reach. So I did some search and found out that there are commercial solutions readily available but they are a bit costlier. So I decided to do something on my own. With a bit of research I was able to find out that even a simple Yagi antenna could be helpful in this situation. This is what a Yagi antenna looks like. It's got some spokes connected on a boom and the signal is carried with the help of a ribbon cable or a coaxial cable. There are three main types of elements in this antenna. One is called reflector. Then there is a driven element which is a half wavelength dipole and then we have directors. All of these are connected on a boom. Now the size and separation between these elements is something which is governed by the frequency or the wavelength. At this link which is given in the description you can find out the calculations. It tells you what should be length of the driven element, what should be the length of reflector and the directors and what should be the spacing between these elements. In order to simplify things, I have put them in an Excel sheet. In this sheet, you have to input the frequency here. You have to pick up the frequency in which your mobile service provider works. For me, it is Vodafone Delhi and Vodafone Delhi operates in band number 3. In fact, it is band number 3 for their GSM coverage as well as for LTE coverage. Now band number 3, if you see, is 1800 megahertz. So I'm going to design the antenna as per 1800 megahertz frequency requirements. So for 1800 band, what should be the size? You have to input the frequency here and it calculates length of each antenna element and the spacing between them automatically. In fact, there is a design sheet as well where you can see it how it looks like. So for example, for 1800 megahertz band, these are the lengths of the elements and the spacing which is shown here graphically. So the reflector element for 1800 megahertz has to be 95 mm in size separated by 58 mm to the dipole 80 mm size and then the director number 1 is 75 mm, director number 2 is 67 mm and so on. Now that we have the design in place let us print it which we will use at the time of construction. In building and mounting this antenna very basic tools and materials are used. Tools like plier, wire strippers, screwdriver, hacksaw for cutting and soldering iron are used. The materials used are also very commonly available at very cheap prices almost everywhere. You need a wire with 1.2 to 1.4 mm dia. If you don't have that, a typical metallic cloth hanger will also serve the purpose it has similar thickness. The wire that I have used is made of iron, but I believe aluminium should give relatively better results. I am using a PVC casing as boom for this antenna. Finally, you will need a coaxial cable. You can use your DV or DTH cable for this purpose. Construction and mounting of this antenna took me around 1 hour. But I'm showing you this video at very high speed to save time. But if you are interested, just let me know through the comments and I can upload the entire video in normal speed. One by one, cut all the elements required for the antenna from the wire. Make sure that you measure it against the scale. Accuracy is important here because any deviations from the length that are needed will impact the performance and directivity of the antenna. Thank you. 
Now cut the PVC casing to use as the boom for the engine. Length of this piece can be calculated by adding together the separation between all the antenna elements. One inch margin on each end will be good for the stability of the antenna. Now mark the positions where all the antenna elements need to be placed on the boom with the help of a pen and by measuring with the scale. After this, I simply used the screwdriver to punch holes through the casing from where the antenna elements were mounted. If you want, you can even paste the antenna elements on the top of the casing. Length of the coaxial cable that I'm using is only 20 feet. For my case it is okay as the distance to be covered is very small. Depending upon where you want to mount the antenna and where you want to use the other end, you can choose the cable length. In principle, longer is the cable length, more will be the losses. So try to keep it as short as possible. To avoid the stress on the solder joint of the dipole element, I routed the coaxial cable through two holes punched on the casing cover and finally assembled the antenna together. On the other end, rest of the cable parts were removed, only the core conductor was kept and it was twisted in the form of English alphabet S. In order to avoid any potential scratching on my phone during the use, I kept this part enclosed between two plastic cards and just taped them together. And finally, the antenna is ready for mounting. I mounted the antenna using a bamboo stick around 7 feet in height and placed it in my front yard pointing towards the mobile tower. Although I am not getting a clear line of sight from the mobile tower at this height, but it still works great. If you can get a clear line of sight, let's say from the top of your house, the results will be even better. And finally, the moment of truth, testing and results. In order to get consistent results, I forced my phone to 2G only in the beginning. I did not want it to change technology while the test was in progress. Now let us see how much of gain the antenna is capable of providing us. Here you can see the condition before using the booster antenna or cable. The receive level normally is minus 97 dBm or 8 ASU which is not a good signal at all. In fact, most of the calls will get dropped at this receipt level. Here is the other end of the cable where the core conductor is bent in this shape and capped between two plastic cards. Within a second of placing the phone over this receiver cable, the reception shows improvement. You can see here the receive level improves up to minus 69 dBm or 22 ASU which is a gain of around 28 dBm which is pretty great for a homemade antenna. Removing the cable throws the receive level back to the original minus 97 dBm or 8 ASU.
At this moment, the network selection mode was changed to LTE, 3G or 2G auto selection and a speed test was performed using Ookla app. The test results were magical. In a place where usually I did not get any LTE signal at all, with the help of this simple antenna and receiver cable, I was able to clock 16 Mbps in the downlink and 12.4 Mbps in the uplink direction. Now someone may say that 16 Mbps for LTE is not really a good throughput. But believe me guys, in Delhi NCR, this is probably better than the average user experience throughput in any place. Just to double check, I performed the test again without the receiver cable. And as expected, the test failed because there was no network coverage for LTE anymore. Checking again with the antenna and cable in use and we are back in business. It is important to point out the receive level for LTE 51 ASU is pretty fantastic receive level in these given conditions. By this time, I was pretty convinced that the antenna is effective and the results were very satisfactory to me. Alright, so I'm sure that you like the results. It's pretty impressive, right? With such a low cost device, you could boost your signal so much. Now let's conclude guys. If mobility is your concern, then definitely this solution is not for you. You have to buy some sophisticated repeater or a booster which is active and can reconstruct the signal to such a level that you can move around in the house, you don't have to stick to that cable. But that's not the goal here. What could be the use cases where this may be useful? Number one, if you want to receive voice calls using a Bluetooth headset, you can just keep your mobile with this cable with good reception and you can still roam around the house. Second use case could be if you want to use your phone as a mobile hotspot or you have a data device just for that purpose, you can keep it sitting on that cable with good reception and you can get good data throughputs with that. In the third case, if you are okay with holding this cable behind your phone, you can still make voice calls. So obviously guys, this is not a sophisticated device, this is a cheap alternative to that and I believe it serves the purpose well. And hey, since I constructed on my own, I find the results to be very satisfactory. Hope you liked this video, I'll see you in the next one.